from Antwerp in uh, Belgium, who's going to talk to us about myocarditis, cardiovascular magnetic resonance is the must, with a question mark after it. Thank you, dear presidents, dear colleagues. Good afternoon. Acute myocardial infarction or acute inflammatory inflammation of the heart muscle is mostly caused by viral infection. Typically, the time course of viral myocarditis is characterized by an acute phase, the viral infection, virus-induced injury, which causes myocyte necrosis and triggers inflammation, an immune response, and follows, which can last a few months, and at the end, finishes by partial or complete recovery of LV function and sometimes in, finishes in a dilated cardiomyopathy. According to Dallas criteria, myocarditis is defined by lymphocytic infiltrates and by necrosis also by edema and fibrotic tissue replacement. History and physical exam are often specific, ranging from a subclinical course to an acute myocardial infarction-like syndrome and or to acute heart failure with hemodynamic compromise. ST wave and T wave changes are often as specific. Biomarkers, including C-reactive protein, have a low specificity. The utility of viral serology is unproven. Echocardiographic findings are often as specific, but important to rule out pericardial effusion, to rule out valvular heart disease, to assess LV function, and to exclude other causes of cardiomyopathy, such as restrictive cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Endomyocardial biopsy is still the gold standard, including immunohistochemistry. However, this technique could be hampered by a sampling error. CMR is a powerful, non-invasive cardiovascular imaging modality, which allows assessment of ventricle function with a high inter-observer uh, consistency. It also allows myocardial tissue characterization in vivo, presence and location of edema, presence and location of necrosis and fibrosis. Also, it allows imaging of the pericardium, pericardial effusion, and even pericardial inflammation. Tissue characterization is based on three techniques. T2-weighted imaging sensitively detects edema. T1-weighted imaging following the first minutes after gadolinium injection shows hyperemia and capillary leak due to regional vasodilatation. This technique is called early enhancement. Late gadolinium enhancement is a highly specific and robust technique to image in vivo ne necrotic scar and fibrosis. The late gadolinium enhancement pattern is important. In myocarditis, you will find the so-called non-ischemic pattern in the mid-wall of the myocardium and in the subepicardial layers, not following the classical coronary artery distribution. In some cases, you will find a transient thickening of the wall. due to edema. This is a typical example 
of a study performed in acute myocarditis or long axis images in the left at the left panel you will see the T2 sensitive edema imaging with zones of high signal typically in the subepicardium and in the mid wall I don't show you a T1 weighted images but this is SSFP imaging and you could also clearly see the early enhancement, typically in the left ventricle free wall. The same can be seen using late gadolinium enhancement with those regions, those islands of high signal intensity in the mid wall and in the sub epicardium. These are the corresponding short axis images at mid ventricle level. Again, the early enhancement and late enhancement, typically in the mid wall. With inflammation, there is a higher content, a higher tissue content of gadolinium and a slower washout of gadolinium out of the tissues. This is due to, in the acute phase, to a higher intracellular gadolinium content because of myocyte membrane rupture, allowing gadolinium to diffuse into the cells. Also in the acute phase, there is more gadolinium in the extracellular space due to edema. At a later stage, you will find interstitial fibrosis in the interstitium, there is more gadolinium retained. We use for late gadolinium enhancement imaging, T1 weighted inversion recovery images, which has the opportunity to null the myocardium, the normal myocardium. So the normal myocardium is seen black There are no large multicenter scale trials up to this moment. So CMR criteria are consensus criteria or expert consensus criteria, the so-called Lake Louise criteria. And they are based on the assessment of myocardial inflammation if two or more of the following criteria are present. The a higher signal intensity on T2-weighted imaging, on early gadolinium uh, enhancement and on late gadolinium enhancement, and are based on the assessment of myocardial scar if late gadolinium enhancement is present. Sometimes you will have a high suspicion of myocarditis and find no enhancement. So, the recommendations proposed to scan again after a period of one or two weeks. And I will explain this in the following slides. If you find LV dysfunction and pericardial effusion, then you have a supportive evidence for myocarditis. Combining these three techniques, early enhancement, T2-weighted imaging, and late gadolinium enhancement gives you, in this pooled data, a sensitivity of, 70, of 67, a specificity of 91, and an accuracy of only 78, which gives you a positive predictive value of 91 and a negative predictive value 69. If you only use late gadolinium enhancement, you will have an accuracy of only 68%. In more recent data published by Lurs in Jack Cardiovascular Imaging last year, 70 patients were studied with acute myocarditis proven by myocardial biopsy, he did find a sensitivity of 81, a specificity of only 71, and an accuracy of 79%. So, if you have a clinical picture, 
suggestive of acute myocarditis and you have a negative scan, you have two possibilities. Or your scan is too early, that means the disease is focal of nature and the late gadolinium enhancement zones are smaller than your spatial resolution. You need to do the scan again, if possible, after two weeks. Or a second uh, possibility is that you have the so-called borderline myocarditis. That means inflammation without necrosis, without damage. So CMR has some limitations, even in case of myocarditis. It has a good specificity, but sensitivity is not optimal. And this is due to the in-plane resolution, to the spatial resolution. Also in uh, folklore patchy inflammation, you could miss the late gadolinium enhancement zones. Depending on the timing of CMR imaging, you could find other things. So the optimal window for late gadolinium enhancement is probably after two weeks after the beginning of the symptoms. CMR doesn't allow to diagnose the exact cause and this could be uh, important, especially in case of, for example, giant cell myocarditis. Another limitation is the availability of CMR machines. Pericardial effusion can easily be seen with CMR. is present in about 50% of all patients having myocarditis. It's of course not specific for myocarditis, but it supports the diagnosis of myocarditis. Typically, simple effusions, uncomplicated effusions, have a low signal intensity on T1 turbospin echo imaging and a high signal intensity on CNA SSFP imaging. CMR has also the ability to visualize inflammation, inflamed pericardium using late gadolinium enhancement. Initial heart failure and right ventricular dysfunction are strong predictors of worse prognosis of sudden cardiac death and incomplete recovery. Also, late gadolinium enhancement is associated with worse prognosis. If you have a patient with LV dysfunction or a dilated left ventricle displaying no late gadolinium enhancement, you will not see sudden cardiac death according to this study published by Grün and Jack last year. If T2 is negative, then you should consider that inflammation is absent and gone. There is another phenomenon, an interesting phenomenon. It's called scar shrinking. It occurs in the so-called healed myocarditis when inflammation is gone. You will see that the scar is usually to a certain degree less than less big than in the acute phase. And the percentage decrease of late gadolinium enhancement has a moderate positive association with LV function improvement. It's quite easy to differentiate ischemic heart disease, myocardial infarction from other non-ischemic causes of heart failure using late gadolinium enhancement. If you have ischemic heart disease, the scar, the late gadolinium enhancement zone, involves typically the subendocardium and extends up to the epicardium and typically follows the coronary anatomy. 
in Takotsubo, cardiomyopathy, another case, another cause of acute heart failure and thoracic pain. If you perform a CMR scan and late gadolinium enhancement, you will see no late gadolinium enhancement, and this predicts recovery of LV function after several weeks. In the Jack so-called white paper, indications for CMR in suspected myocarditis were proposed. If you have new or a persistent symptom of shortness of breath, chest pain, palpitations, together with any evidence of myocardial injury, such as LV dysfunction, ECG changes or an increase in troponin, and a suspected viral etiology, a history of a systemic viral infection, or an upper airway infection two weeks ago, for example, in a patient with no cardiovascular risk factors and a negative angio, then you should perform a CMR study or think of it. I would like to conclude that CMR is a valuable tool and may provide an alternative for the diagnosis of myocarditis without risks of a myocardial biopsy. It offers diagnosis of acute myocarditis, also chronic myocarditis, by tissue characterization using different techniques, T2, and early and late gadolinium enhancement. It can differentiate between acute and chronic myocarditis. It can differentiate active inflammation from scar. It has also, prov uh, it provides also predictors and clues for prognosis, sudden cardiac death and incomplete recovery. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Could I just ask you one question? Hopefully we'll have a question from the floor. Um, you suggest that CMR can be used as an alternative to a biopsy potentially in patients, but given that CMR can't differentiate between the different etiologies and some types of myocarditis have very specific treatment, do you think in avoiding biopsy we may be disadvantaging some patients? That's the right point. So as I have shown, it could, uh, you could miss, for example, a giant cell myocarditis, and you could miss a valuable therapy in this kind of patients, namely corticosteroids. And you cannot make the difference just by the LGE pattern you can see on a CMR scan. That's right. So a uh, biopsy is uh, indicated, maybe not in all patients, but in patients with show um, persistent hemodynamic compromise. That's an uh, important point. Okay, thank you very much. Are there